There is a substantial risk of loss associated with trading forex, binary options, stocks, or equities, collectively, asset classes. Only risk capital should be used for trading. Trading in any asset classes is not appropriate for everyone. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. No representation is being made that investors will make profits or will not sustain losses. Before trading in any asset classes, investors should consult with their professional broker, financial advisor, or financial consultant to determine whether trading asset classes is appropriate. Investors who trade in any asset classes should only do so if the capital used for this purpose represents funds that an investor can afford to lose without adversely impacting the investor's lifestyle. No trading strategy or methodology is without risk of loss. No trading strategy is risk-free and no trading strategy can guarantee profits or freedom from losses. Investors risk losing the cost to execute any transaction, including associated commissions or fees. You should carefully consider whether trading in any asset class is appropriate for you in light of your investment experience and financial resources. Any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. None of the statements or materials in the Ovoria Prime chat rooms constitute a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell. All right, guys, it is 11.04, no, 12.04 on the dot. So we are going to get this thing going. I know everyone has Saturday. It's, you know, the weekend. You want to get out. You want to party. Have, have some fun. But we're going to drop some knowledge. I'm going to share some things with you guys. Matt asked me if I would be willing to jump on the AP Nation call, say what's good, and share some thoughts, insights, things that have helped my career in this industry. And, of course, it is always a pleasure for me to do that. Um, and it's what I love to do. So thank you guys for being on the call. I really appreciate it. Thank you for jumping in. Um, and I know that we will keep adding more people on the calls people uh, pile in. But one of the things that I wanted to kind of go over on this call just a little bit is kind of just where I feel like the temperature is, is this company's growing as evolving. Um, and as we kind of near the end of the summer, we start transitioning into the fall and really like the last quarter of 2022, how we're going to finish out strong than what 2023 is going to bring as well, which I think is going to be important for everyone on here. Um, before I go into just some of my thoughts and just my experience and some things that I'm excited about, I do want to share this. Uh, Matt asked me to show this event. For anyone that is in Europe, if you are in Europe, I want to pop up this flyer for you guys to make sure you screenshot this, write this down. Let me open it up right now. One second. Okay, guys. So I'm going to enlarge this. So Saturday, August 20th, 2022 at the Radisson Hotel. I'm not going to try and... You can't see your screen, buddy. Oh, um, it says my screen's being shared. Yeah, it says I started screen share, but can't see anything. All right, let me try again. Hold on. How about now? Let's see. Uh, it says screen sharing has failed to start. Try again later. Okay, let me try this again. Okay, can you see my screen or no? No. Weird. Okay, that's odd. Uh, on here, it's real quick. I'll, I'll share my screen. Yeah, I want you to share your screen, Matt. Maybe. Hang on, it's coming. Yeah, I think my Zoom needed to update, so it's like not letting me share my screen because of it. I'll admit people while you're uh, sharing your screen. Okay. Matt's gonna give a quick little rundown. We got an event going on in Europe in August, so if you guys are in Europe or if you want to take a flight to Europe. Uh, he's going to break down just quickly where it is and when it's going down. Maybe. Um, all right. Here we go. Okay. Booyah. Booyah. All right, guys. Saturday, August 20th, 2022. We are having an event in London. We got Dr. Arfab Muhammad Shafiq, Cameron Kirker, and your president, Matt Ward. They're going to be there. It's going to go from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. So make sure you guys screenshot this, write it down, put it somewhere so you guys have this down. Um, but come to the UK if you can. If you've never been, it's incredible. I had a great time. The times I've been to London, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, but if you're in London, get your butt there, invite a couple friends, make sure you get out there. Uh, because this is going to be an awesome event. I know the speaking is going to go great. I know the content is going to be good. There's probably going to be some updates that you guys are going to want to get on and, and really learn. So make sure you can make it if possible. So guys, we're going to hold this for another five seconds. Screenshot it, write it down, take note of it. It'll also be in the AP chats and the announcements and the updates. So you're going to make sure you're going to be able to tune in. So that's that. Without further ado, guys. So 
I had mentioned before we gave that update, I was going to kind of talk about where I see AP is right now as a company, where we're going and kind of the future. So one thing that I have uh, really noticed in just the last six months uh, for myself is that the, the marketplace, like the industry that we are all in of not just direct sales and network marketing, but really like the whole industry, like entrepreneurship, finance, I have seen more and more companies under deliver with products consistently in this space. And I'm not just talking about in the financial sector. I'm talking about uh, companies that handle sales, that handle e-commerce, that handle real estate, just an array of different things. I've seen a lot of different companies make offers, make claims. And then when people actually get in the system, they fork out 20 grand, 30 grand, $40,000 for some of these services, some of these products, it's not turning out the way they want. And even myself, uh, being a affiliate and customer of AP, but also an investor looking at different things in the world, I find myself really feeling like, man, I don't know if it's because of the economy right now in the United States. I don't know if it's because like we're getting into a recession on it's because the world's been kind of crazy over the last six months to a year post COVID. But it for myself has been like harder and harder to find things that I feel like I can really believe in and trust that will yield what has been told that will give me the result that I'm looking for. And the challenge that I find just in business in general is you have the desire and the want and the need to get new business to attract people to your offer, right? Whether that's you selling products with AP or anything, whether it's your own business you run, you have this deep you know, desire to drive traffic and bring in a new market of business because that's what's going to flood your business and be successful, right? But the challenge is, is that if you become very, very talented and very, very skilled at attracting that business, if once that credit card is swiped and now people are on the other side of your business and the product side now comes in and the fulfillment side takes place, if you're not able to fulfill that desire, then your business is going to be able to bring in a lot of stuff. And then as soon as they come in, they're out the other door and you're going to have a massive headache. You're not going to find freedom as an entrepreneur. You're going to find a lot more stress, a lot more anxiety, a lot more sleepless nights, a lot less nice, peaceful mornings. And I know what that's like in, in my past. I've been there as well. When I first even got into uh, the Forex space, it was probably like 2018, I think. Um, I had such little knowledge on what Forex was. I thought it was possible to have you know, products that can make 15, 20% a day. I didn't know. And I, I remember I was actually at uh, dinner last night. I went and met up with Hassan and Steve Betterall with AP. And we were uh, getting a couple of drinks out here in Orlando. And we were just having a good time, just catching up, talking. If you guys have ever hung out with Steve, Steve is such a funny guy. And again, he you know has a massive massive company he does with financial uh, financial advising. They have like I think sixty million dollars assets under management, um, and he's just he's just hilarious. And we were just sharing stories when we were younger about you know the markets and forex. And I was telling them how when I first got into forex, I saw people making money on this bot. When I saw people making money on the bot, I was like, oh, this thing's got to work. It's got to be so cool. And I showed, or I saw people not even showing FX books, but it was just people showing their MT4 screenshots. And they're showing like 30% in a day, 50% in a day, 20% in the day. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. So I put in like maybe a thousand dollars, right? And in like a week, I made like 45%. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if I would have had $10,000 in there, I would have made almost five grand. This is wild. So I remember I went home to see my family in the summer in Seattle and I funded a $25,000 account for this, this product. Now at the time for me, $25,000 was like, it was all the money I had and some. Like it was, a, it was a lot for me to do that, but I didn't understand risk management because I was new to the Forex game. And I just figured, oh, well, you know, it, it won't lose me my total amount. It'll just make me money or it won't make money at all. It's not gonna lose me money. It just will either make me money or not make me as much money. So I fund this 25K account. And then I fly from Seattle back to Florida where I live. And I'll never forget, I landed on the plane. I turned my phone off airplane mode and I'm walking off the plane and I open my phone and I'm in $9,000 in drawdown. And I'm like, holy crap, what's going on? And I didn't know what to do at the time. And I called Cameron and Cameron's like, bro, close out, close out. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, I think you should close out. Now, I whether I should have or not, like maybe for all I know, it was going to rebound back and I would have been fine. But I closed out all of the trades for a $9,000 loss on a 25K account because I didn't know what I was doing. And, I was, and what that did was it rocked me, right? Like it made me go, wow, like maybe Forex doesn't work in general, you know? Like look at my experience I just had. Maybe trading doesn't work in general. Maybe investing doesn't work in general. Maybe wealth doesn't work in general, right? Maybe entrepreneurship doesn't work in general. Isn't it funny how you can have one experience happen to you that's not what you uh, had anticipated and then it makes you question every single other opportunity in your life? right? So obviously we know entrepreneurship works, right? Obviously we know investing works. Obviously we know wealth works because are there wealthy people in the world? Last time I checked, there are. And obviously we know that foreign exchange works. But from that one experience, 
I had a very limiting belief that popped in and I entertained that limiting belief for probably a total of like 90 seconds. And I was like, all good. I'll find other products. We'll make it happen. And we went through a period where we were, we were losing consistently with different products, trying to figure out ones that work. But the thing that I realized is that, um, and this kind of circles back to my main point about under-promising and over-delivering instead of over-promising results. In order to get to a point where there are products out there that really add value on a mass scale, the only way you get to a point where you have products you can offer mar the marketplace on a mass scale is to experience, unfortunately, a lot of hiccups, losses, and frustrations in order to get to that point. Now, I'm not saying customers need to go through that experience. That's why we have beta groups and testing groups. But one thing that I try and do, my business partners try and help me do is if, if a new product comes out in the marketplace, right? Or if a new product comes out in general in your life, anything you're doing, even if you see results, do not go all in and drop all your cards on the table. It's better. And I'm going to give you an example. It's better to have, let's say you have $10,000 and you see a product come out and this product's doing like 10% a month and it's fire and it's crushing. It's been doing that for a month and you're really excited. It would be better to take that 10K and not put it all into the product, even if it's doing those yields month after month after month, but it would be better to let your 10K sit, put in like a thousand bucks, do a demo account, let that run, and then gradually put in more money into that opportunity until you feel confident with it. And now when I say it, a lot of people go, if I have 10 grand, I need that 10 grand to make me money to cover my bills, cover my expenses, cover my lifestyle. If it's not going to make me money, then that 10 grand is going to just slowly dissipate on my bills and my credit cards and everything that comes with life. My response to that is, okay, what would you rather have? Would you rather have $10,000 in something that you think works good, but then on month two or month three, it drives you out and you only have two grand left? Or would you rather have that 10K and then gradually put in money? And then maybe because you don't go all in, you have to cover your expenses and maybe you have to fork out like two or 3,000 bucks on your expenses. But when you finally feel like this thing's confident enough for it to work for you, you can dump the rest of that money in, right? It would be the latter. You'd want to be in a position where you can gradually scale into something instead of jump in all crazy. And the reason why I think that's really important is because for especially the people that we work with in the space, we have to always balance these two demons, right? You guys see like the cartoons as a kid where there's like the angel on one side whispering in your ear and the devil on the other, right? And we really what that is, it's a metaphor for the ego, right? It's the metaphor of like one side of you is like it's tapped into source or, or God or the universe, wherever you call God, right? And the other side is, is the immoral side and the ego side. Well, in, in business too, in marketing, uh, with AP, you also have to realize we deal that same process. So what I mean by that is on one side, there's the voice that's like, I'm going to say whatever I need to say to get this person to sign up for Avoria Prime, right? That's one voice. Doesn't matter. I'm going to tell them guarantees. I'm going to tell them it's fully automated. I'm going to tell them you don't have to do a thing. I'm going to tell them it's make you hundred percent a day, right? There's that voice in your head. that's like, I'll just say whatever I can to get them to join, right? Then the other voice in your head is, if they do that under the expectations that you gave them, right, and they swipe their card and they get involved, you now set out the, the more you make it unrealistic, the easier it is for them to join, right? That's, that's, that's a given. But the more you make it unrealistic, the more you have to deal with the disappointment of expectations as well on the back end, right? So you have to play this game between two voices because there's some people who are super, super, super far leaning on one side where they try and make it seem like, you know, hey, you could lose money. Don't invest what you're willing to lose. You know, people have lost money in the past, like tread lightly. And then people do sign up from time to time and then they get a better experience because it's better than the way they pitched it. But then those people, they never get any new business because they're almost over the top under promising to such an extent. No one wants to join because it sounds too risky and not good. So you in your own life have to discern that balance, that scale. Because some of you guys may think, well, it's going to be easy if I just say whatever I want to get new business and then I can hit this new rank like 10K or whatever it is. But what you're not recognizing is if you do that and then you have like two, three, four hundred people in your business under the expectations they're going to be making three, four, five, six hundred percent a year. As soon as one little red dot or one little red thing comes on their MT4 history, they're calling you. They're hitting you up. They're asking what's going on. And you just basically built yourself a big pile of crap you have to deal with. And that's not fun either. Right. So that's why it's really about understanding balance and understanding as well that how you talk to people on the front end is going to dictate the amount of work that you have to deal with on the back end. Right. So my my goal, at least when I'm prospecting, when I'm talking to people is just to let my own experience do the talking. Right. I let my own experience dictate. 
And I'm very excited because for example, I was running version two of like MMT and it's been my second week running version two of MMT. Um, whoops, I just asked him to unmute my bad. Uh, so it's been my second week running version two of MMT, testing that new one out. And I've been really, really excited with how it's been performing because running that myself on, I believe 1% risk right now. So just a 1% risk per trade. This is what I've seen, at least on my account. And I made sure like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm writing on an FX book. I want to make sure I'm doing it properly. But on just 1% risk per trade over the last two weeks, take a look at this. Tell me you guys you want to do this in two weeks trading. Not bad, right? Oh, wait, you can't see my screen, huh? Then I'm going to share my FX book in here because my screen sharing is not working. Uh, can you drop a seven in the chat if you can't see my screen so I know? Because I think I need to update my Zoom. So let's see. Okay, so you can't see my screen. Okay, guys, in the chat, check this out. I just dropped it. Boom. I just dropped this FX book. Check this out in the chat. And check out that drawdown, guys. All right. Open that up. That drawdown is not bad, right? We're talking 18.24% in two trading weeks with no more than 2% drawdown. I don't know about you guys, but... I don't need to overhype that when I'm prospecting someone. I don't need to make that seem crazier than, than what it is right there. I mean, that's almost a 20% return in two weeks. That's, we're talking like almost 10% a week. Now, if someone asked me, that's amazing. Should I expect 40% months, 30 to 36% months? What am I going to say? No, I'm not going to say yes. I'm going to say no, right? These two weeks have been incredible. Does that mean every week is going to do that? No way. Are you kidding me? I mean, if you look at this FX book, right? Even the growth on this FX book, there was one day that had a 10% day running one risk per trade. So on average, it's not like it's going to be 10% every single time. And this is why we have to balance those expectations. So I can go to someone and go, yeah, I did almost 20% in two weeks on my account running one risk per trade. But if they ask me, oh, so should I expect those same results consistently, I'm not going to tell them yes. Because then when they sign up and they join our team, I'm going to be going through all this work trying to figure out how to manage those expectations, right? So I just want to cover that a little bit because I think it's really important just to understand how to manage those expectations and how we, we share results. And if you don't have results yourself, share other people's, okay? Use other people's experiences. But between that, between the signals, between Crypto Advantage, there's an array of products right now that are so incredible that I'm very confident in that I feel like at this point, it's a disservice of people that get their hands on. So then it's like, okay, well, what do you guys need to do in your positions to be able to get more people in your business? So I'm going to share just kind of like one idea, one philosophy, one point. And that's going to kind of be like my, my lesson uh, for the day. That's going to be kind of like my, 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 my advice for you guys on the safety nation call. All right. So I want you guys to start understanding and start accepting that your business. Okay. As an entrepreneur is not to be a number one earner in network marketing, right? It's not to go IPO and sell some company. Uh, none of that. Your, your actual business, if you want to rank up in an, in an MLM like this, in a, in a sales model like this, if you want to like grow the ranks, you are in the audience acquisition business. Okay. You're in the audience acquisition business. That's the business that you are in when you decide to make money online. I mean, that really is what it comes down to. There are people that sell merchandise. There are people that sell tickets to events. There are people that sell their feet on OnlyFans. There's people that sell a lot of different stuff, right, online. Funny enough, uh, two weeks ago, I had a buddy of mine, as a side note, that uh, builds crypto bots, and his girlfriend was working a job, job she hated, and he figured out a way where she could only post pictures of her feet on OnlyFans, and now she makes $5,000 a month, and he did all of her marketing for her. Never shows her face, only shows her feet. She has 175 people paying every single month for uh, just, you know, occasionally, a couple times a week, taking photos of her feet. And she was working at like a grocery store before, right? But we talk about all these different industries, but the same underlying thing is the same. Audience acquisition. That's the name of the game is audience acquisition. And if you look at all the people you follow on Instagram, on Facebook, on social media, Grant Cardone, Gary V, Ed Milet, you know, all these different people, they all sell different products. They all have fundamentally different businesses but all of their businesses and all of their profit uh, products are profitable because they've mastered audience acquisition. All right, you understand? 
So the, the, the social media platforms, the advertising, all of these things are tools to ramp up your ability to acquire audiences, right? To build up a larger and larger audience. That's the whole business. Because if you can scale your audience, if you can scale that model, then it doesn't matter what you're selling. Every single time there's a product in your life that you feel like adds value, you've acquired a large audience that's willing to pay because they like trust and respect you. So the, the reason why I share this is because a lot of times people are so binary with their business, they're under the expectation that they go, okay, I'm in AP, I got to go rising star, I got to go 5k, I got to go 10k. And when I'm mic on 10, like then I can breathe. And while yeah, yeah, you do like that's important. The truth of the matter is, is that you got to figure out how do I do that? Because you want to be able to have those skills in whatever you do. And the answer is you have to accept the fact that you're in business of audience acquisition. Your goal is to scale an audience. Now that doesn't mean you have to become famous. It doesn't mean you have to become like a celebrity, right? It doesn't mean you have to like clout chase and try and, you know, act like someone you're not. It means you have to figure out a way in your life to acquire a large scale of people that are willing to buy products and services that you offer, no matter what industry that you are in. Now, the answer to how to do that is that there is no perfect answer because it's different for every single person, right? But when you realize what you need to actually do, then you can start understanding how that's going to fit into your life. Some of you guys maybe are in seasons of your life where the idea of sharing your life to people to acquire that audience does not feel good. It seems intimidating. It seems challenging. The challenge with that is that you are then going to have to leverage the networks that you have to find other people who are going to do that. Okay. So to make sure we're really clear here, if you see people that make a lot of, a lot of money in network marketing and they're very low key and they don't have a big following, they don't have a big presence and so forth. One, they probably built a team many, many years ago that's still using their products and services today. And it doesn't require them to have a big presence and have to have a lot of influence online or to get people involved in their opportunity. Or B, they were fortunate enough to find people in their life, in their circle, and develop relationships with those people and have those people join their business. And those people that they were able to get involved do have a skill set and audience acquisition. And they're essentially profiting off of the skills of those other people as well, which happens all the time. And would you go, oh, well, screw them? No, you go, you killed it, right? There's a lot of people in network marketing who have huge teams that have made millions, tens of millions of dollars that are low profile, but they're very, very skilled at finding people that have bigger presences and being able to influence those people on a, on a cooperative win-win situation to join their team and join their business. And then those people do what they do best and acquire a large audience and build big teams. And they're able to leverage and work with those people. The challenge is that there's people that join network marketing and go, well, I just want to do that. Right? Like I, I don't want to have to like scale an audience and like influence people and like drive people into my business. And it's like, well, yeah, no crap. That's what everyone wants to do. But most of those people at one point or another had to go do that trench work and had to grind. The challenge is that in today's world, the only way that I see really long-term for people to have like big, big success in these companies is to accept the fact that you're going to have to figure out a way to acquire a large audience online. The best way to do that is video format. It's one of the best ways is to use video because what are we all doing now? Have you noticed Instagram has pretty much gone full video based off of TikTok, right? YouTube now has YouTube shorts. It's because as time grows, human beings' attention spans are going to become smaller and smaller. And our addiction, and our addiction to dopamine is going to become bigger and bigger. So whereas in 2010, maybe all you'd have to do is film a 20-minute video once a month, in 2022, if you're not omnipresent, you're forgotten. And perfect example is think about your own addiction to your device, right? How consistently, how often are you constantly going through different social media profiles, seeing different videos, having stimulation, right? Hit your cerebrals over and over and over and over. I guarantee you probably forgot about things that you've seen on your social media just from the day before. How in the world, if that's the case, how in the world do you get people to stay focused on you? How do you get an audience to be actually interested in what you're doing? And the answer is relationship reputation, okay? You have to develop relationships through your reputation online. And that's where when you're seeing things all day on TikTok and on social media and you're swiping through, you're not really paying attention to it. But if you see someone add value on one of those profiles, one of those platforms, and maybe you follow them and then they're consistently adding value, now they stick out in your brain. So when you see them pop up, 
you have a, a, a memory of seeing their content prior. So that's another exposure. So the way we used to teach network marketing a decade ago was that you have to have multiple exposures, right? You have to call your best friend, tell them about the opportunity. They say no. Then you have to convince them to get on with your upline. They say no. Then you got to convince them to go to Starbucks and meet the upline. They say no. Then you got to convince them to go to a live event. They say no. And you keep doing these exposures. Then you got to follow up again and show them the results of your product. And they finally say yes. And on the fifth exposure, they say yes. And they go, oh, well, you know, you sign people up always on like the fifth, sixth, seventh exposure. It's very rarely the one. But nowadays, the exposure idea is not like that. You're not going to do that with one person or you're going to be broke. It's just not going to work. If you put that much work into signing up one person in your business, I mean, nine times out of 10, when you sign someone up, they don't go duplicate to tons of people. You have to increase those averages. Now the exposure method is online. It's through social media. So as you create more opportunities where people can get exposed to who you are, you increase the rate of that receptability to them to learn from you, which then increases that receptability for them to potentially want to inquire about what you do, which then increases that receptability for them to want to buy from you, right? So the exposure method has now shifted to an online cloud-based social media presence. That's why we talk about omnipresence and audience acquisition. So a perfect example that I would give is Alfie. If you guys don't know who Alfie is, Alfie has done an incredible job scaling the content audience acquisition because when he first got into network marketing alfie didn't like post online all the time he wasn't like trying to build his social media presence he just you know had social media and he you know lived his life and did his thing but now if you look like on his youtube he has really unique thumbnails he's constantly talking about the products he's sharing his experiences he's sharing losses and not just wins alfie's done a really tremendous job building an audience by documenting his results his life and his experiences and so this is a big thing that I always, I always challenge people on is in my life, what I've noticed is the more times that I decide to not, I don't want to say document my life, like not documentary style, but share my experiences, things have worked for me, things that haven't worked for me online in video format or in photos, mainly video format. Every time I've decided to do that, the more I share, the more I get back, right? It's just the same way the world works. The more you give, the more you receive. The more I make decisions to share, the more people inquire. Because if I don't share, they're not going to know you even exist. So how would they inquire of someone they don't know? It's impossible. They can't. So I've always been in seasons of my life, and I'm going to be very transparent. There's times where I haven't done it for six months, a year, whatever. But when there's seasons of my life where I'm not actively building an audience online, it's probably because I've been able to just live off of my, my investment income and haven't needed to. But if you're in a season of your life where it's like, I can't afford that right now. I need to grind, I need to be able to grow, then you have to accept the fact that that's the nature of the beast that you have to get involved in. Now, in this season of my life, I'm super excited to create content. Cameron and I uh, got Calvin out here. If you guys don't know who Calvin is, he's one of the uh, videographers for Abordia Prime. And we we're like, hey, dude, let's hang out for two or three days and let's just film some awesome content. Let's film some fun things for AP. Let's film things for our own brand. And let's just create some really fun stuff and just keep it really casual and just enjoy uh, creating video content together and just have a fun time doing it. And that's exactly what we did. We stayed for two days. We got all these videos and it was a really fun time. And we got a lot of really cool content uh, that'll get repurposed probably in you know late August or September. But my, my point when I share this is that there are seasons where you do that and you don't. If it's difficult for you to feel like you need to share your life in video format or, or document your experiences online, it's going to be difficult for people to want to join your business. Because how do you expect people to want to engage with you if you're not even willing to engage in the world that lives in the cloud now? This is just the nature of this industry at this point that you have to accept. If you have a really good network locally and you've built a really good organization locally of people that respect and value you, you can get away with building a, a network marketing business in 2022 through that network and then tapping that network on and on. And I'm talking about the people that maybe are working at, you know, a, a hardware store, or the people that are working a desk job and they're working nine hour days and they're stressed and frustrated and they're trying to figure out how to expand their life. Those people have to accept the fact that if you don't already have that network in play, you have to use the format of video to share your life online so that people even know what you're up to and what you do in the first place in order to build 
relationships with people so that they can inquire to learn about you. And now the big challenge with that, and the reason why a lot of people go through these crossroads is because you have to ask yourself, am I interesting enough, right? And that's like your own inner battle. Like, am I interesting enough, quote unquote? And the reason I say quote unquote is, of course you are, right? Every individual is interesting to someone. Everyone is interesting to someone. Every single person on the planet. Your life experience is completely unique and different to everyone else's life experience. And there's billions of people on this planet and not one person has the same life experience that you have from birth till now. And in that period, in that dash that's your birth till now, there's all this knowledge that you've built up through those experiences that other people don't have. The challenge you're going to have to go through is battling with that devil on your shoulder we talked about earlier, that ego, who's going to tell you, nah, that's not worth sharing. People aren't going to find value in that. And realizing you got to listen to the angel on your side going, someone's going to find value in that share. Someone's going to find value in that share. Someone's going to find value in that share. And when you consistently do that again and again and again, you will find people that will sprout up in that garden that want to learn more about what you're doing. Now, the big thing that's really cool about this, this industry and about this space is that it gets easier as it gets bigger, believe it or not. I've been in this game for about 10 years, and I can tell you, the hardest part of network marketing is the beginning. We don't have a team. We don't have a group. We don't have a big business. Um, it gets easier as you get a bigger team because there's more people to work with. There's more people to grow with. There's more people to leverage. There's more people to communicate with. It, it just becomes easier. So the hardest part is the beginning. But I got to encourage you to have the courage to accept the fact that you are not in a network marketing business. You're in an audience acquisition business. You're in the business of building your own personal presence online so that you can be able to get more people to inquire about what you do, what your life's like. And that doesn't mean you have to be fake and be someone you're not. You can actually be very transparent and open and honest with people and vulnerable. And nowadays that actually shifts the tide and people want to work with you even more because they're so, uh, they're so inundated with people that are just speaking bullshit. They're talking about stuff that is fake or doesn't really matter. Uh, perfect example is trick shot videos. You guys know those trick shot videos where they're standing on their couch like this and they have a ping pong ball and they throw the ping pong ball and it bounces on a bunch of different things and it lands in a cup five yards away and then they all jump and celebrate. I just found out they're all fake. I didn't even know that. They have people with green screens that hold a stick that's, that's taped to the ping pong ball and they just go like this and then put it in the cup, right? So people build entire businesses on social media with fake, with, with fake content, right? Prank videos, right? That, those are all fake, right? It's all fake. So when you can make a decision to be real online, you bridge the gap from all the bullshit. And then people become attracted to you so much quicker because you're willing to just communicate your honest, transparent feelings, which is what people are begging for right now in this world. Because the more we become addicted to our phones, the less connected we feel to the people in our world around us. And that's really, really important for people to realize is the longer you do that, you're going to be able to connect with people on a deeper level because they're going to want to inquire about what you're doing because they're going to feel like you're honest and real. And that doesn't mean making your life seem perfect all the time. It means opening up some of your faults, some of your mistakes, some things that don't work for you. So uh, in, in, in summary, right, like we are in the audience acquisition business. And what I really recommend doing if you're trying to just get going and you're trying to get started is use your own experiences and use the experiences of people in your business to document and share why the company's products are so powerful, right? Why, while, uh, why I think Avori Prime is some of the best products in the entire industry. Use your own experience to document that journey with people and just share unbiased. Here's what's working. Here's what's not working. Here's what I'm noticing is going great. Here's things I'm going to shift and here's how I'm going to get better. I mean, I met with Dasan last night and he's talking about trying to get MMT on V3 to have a 90% win rate. It has like, an, like, I think it has like an 80% win rate right now. And it's again, I'm pushing for 90. Do you know how rare it is to find products that have a 90% win rate with a stop loss in every single trade? If you can get people to understand the products as you understand it, and you can document your experience with these products, then that's educational people right there. And understand too, you're not talking about two weeks doing 18%. You're talking about what can happen over the span of a year, two years, three years, five years. It's a year long journey. You could have four weeks where you lose money, but would you go through four weeks of losing money if you could have eight years of profitable years, right? Steven Vedderall, I asked him about his, his company, his financial firm. He told me what they do annually. He said, that's really good. And he, first thing he says is results don't prove the future. 
And I said, so it's like blank, blank percent a month. He goes, no, it's not every single month. But this is what we get about every year. So you can't let one month dictate a year. It's just the way the business works when you start getting into investing. So a lot of you on this call, your own understanding of what it means to be an investor in the trading space has probably evolved and developed since you joined Avoria Prime yourself, I would imagine, right? Just like me a couple of years ago when I got off that airplane and I was in $9,000 of drawdown. Well, now I understand that I'm going to test a product for a little bit before I go big, right? I'm going to understand that I'm going to balance my funds a little bit more before I just go all in. I understand that I need to have stop losses on my trades. I understand that I want to trail my stop losses so I can lock in profit. So you learn different things as you do this too. Share that with people. Share your experiences. Share with people that you don't even know. And you're going to have people inquire about what you're doing. And the more you can do that, the more you're going to be able to get more and more comfortable with it too, right? Get yourself in a position where you can get comfortable. And it's not about motivation. It's about discipline. Discipline yourself to share even when you don't want to, because you can stay motivated for a day or two. But if you want to have a larger organization that's paying your residual income for years and years and years of your life, motivation will not pay your bills, but discipline will deliver. Okay. Motiv motivation won't pay your bills, but if you are disciplined, it will deliver. So understand what you're in. It's the business of audience acquisition. How do you acquire an audience? How do you scale that up? You've got to figure out a way to document your journey, your results, and the results of others through video format and use creativity. Get creative. There's not a one-stop shop for this. Maybe you have this idea. It's like, man, I want to interview X person or Y person. And I want to get that person to go take a look and kind of see what's, what's going on. But the thing that I want to challenge you guys for is like, in, in this journey, in this game, the constant issue that people deal with, and this is something that I, I've been very fortunate enough to be connected with some of the top network marketers in the entire world. Um, I'm in Telegram threads with Eric Worre, who creates the group talking about all these different investments. Um, I, I get on phone calls with people that have companies that do $10 million a month in revenue. They have teams of hundreds of thousands of people. I've just been fortunate being in this game, failing for so long, making mistakes again, after again, and after uh, again, I've been very fortunate where now I have a network of people, not even an AP, but in the industry that are worth eight figures, some that are worth nine figures, who I can text on my phone and I can call. And the reason why I share that is because through all those different people, there's a trend in this industry that the people that are successful in this space, like the ones that I talked about, they understand fundamentally that you are engaging and joining an industry that's not going to grow for you. And you have to be solution driven every single time. You can't go, man, like I can make videos all day, but like, I don't know how to edit videos. So what do I do if I can't edit videos? I guess you just stay broke. No, you figure out a way to edit videos yourself or you find an editor. Oh, the editor is too expensive. Then the solution is to make more money or hire an editor in the Philippines or in Colombia because you can get the same bang for your buck at a way cheaper rate. And now you can hire a team that can help your staff. Like I, I have employees out of the Philippines that make my life so much easier. And fortunately, the pay is much less because they need less to live off of in the Philippines. And they're great. We have value. We got the birthdays memorized and we have a great relationship. But I didn't go, man, I need to figure out a way to edit videos or else I'm just not going to be able to scale. Well, I guess I'm just not going to be successful because I can't figure out that challenge. Right. And like, I get very annoyed with this because I feel like a lot of people do this. They either blame their upline, they blame the company, they just point fingers at other people. And it's like, do you want to be right or do you want to be rich? Seriously. Do you want to be right or do you want to be rich? Like, I think it's so stupid how people sometimes want to, want to, they work so hard trying to prove a point to be right, but then their circumstance is still shit. And it's like, well, okay, what do you, would you rather be? You want to sit in a spot, in an environment, in a setting of your life that you aren't happy with, but you're right? Or are you willing to be wrong, but you can win? If you had asked me, would you rather be wrong and win or right or, and right or rich, right? I want to win. I want to win again and again and again. I don't care being wrong from time to time, right? I, I just don't feel like I need to always have everything figured out. But if something's not working, I'm not going to go blame other people all day. I'm going to figure out what I can do to solve that problem because I'm the only one that's going to build my life to where I want to go. No one else is going to build it for me. No, no one's going to take you where you need to go. No one's going to carry you there. This isn't, this isn't a job where you just show up, you leave, you get paid, you live your life, you keep your health insurance, you keep your benefits. Like we don't give you health insurance here, ladies and gentlemen, we don't cover your car insurance. Like you are a 1099. It is on you to go, but man, the risk is way less than starting a company from scratch. You join something with an already built commission engine that pays you every Friday morning. Who got paid on Friday? 
Drop a seven in the chat. If you got a check from AP morning, bop, every single day like clockwork. So engage in a business that already has the commission engine and use the mentorship you're able to extract from people who've already done it and use that to level up your life. And at any point, if you think you can't, well, you're right, you can't. But at any point, if you think you can, well, you're right, you can. Understand? Like you're actively dictating the reality that you're stepping into on a day-by-day basis. So if you walk into a reality that validates all the reasons you're not successful, then you're going to believe and add emotion in that reality and make it so. Whereas if you walk into a reality that realizes you can solve every challenge that's in front of you, then you're going to walk into a reality that makes it so. But the emotion is what adds the impact to that reality being real. So that's on you to figure that out and discern that on your own. But don't overcomplicate the things that need to happen. You need to gain an audience of people that want to inquire about what you're doing. And when you can find that audience, people that want to inquire about what you're doing, you have to figure out a really organized way to share that information. Nine times out of 10, just using results to share. And then you get those people involved in your business and you don't overhype it so that when they get involved, right? When they get involved, their experience is better than what you said. That way, when they swipe that card and you show them a better experience after they swipe the card than what you promised them, they're going to want to really stick around instead of looking for all the reasons why it's not working based off of your own expectations that you gave them. And now you're having to babysit them all day. We're not in the business of babysitting, all right? That's not the business that we are in. We're in the business of building people up and then letting them go off on their own. Same way you raise a child, right? You don't want your 27-year-old kid living in your house still. You're off on your own. It's been 18 years paying for your stuff. Go do you. Same thing with this. That's why you don't want to blame people. So guys, uh, we've been here for about 45 minutes. Uh, we're going to uh, bring this call to a close. I appreciate you guys jumping on. Thank you so much for letting me just share some of my thoughts, my experiences on AP and just business in general. Really means a lot to me. Go to that London event if you can. This is going to be a really great end quarter of 2022. I really believe it. I know that the products here are really ramping up. I know on our side, we're going to start ramping up some really great content to scale the company from a marketing perspective and just really share the products and the experiences that we're getting because they're pretty profound. Um, so leverage the teams, leverage the tele- telegram chats, leverage your upline in the systems. And then again, understand it's a long-term journey to build your business. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. It's a growth experience that you all get to be involved in. And then just really uh, understand that, it, you know, the more you can lean on the people around you and, and build a community of people that all want the same thing, your, your cross line, your upline, maybe some people on your teams, the faster you're going to be able to start growing in your own habits and be able to surround yourself with people that really, really, really want to inquire about what you're up to and what your life's like. So uh, yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate it so much. Make sure to jump on that call uh, or on that, uh, sorry, make sure to jump to that event um, and we'll see you guys next Saturday. So enjoy your weekend and uh, bye for now. Peace.